Well, hey crafty friends. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh my gosh. On this video, I'm gonna show you what I think is the cutest, my absolute favorite uh, wine cork and champagne cork craft project. It's super easy. You are gonna to wanna to make these and if you don't wanna make them, I can't understand why. Anyways, these are so adorable and they're super easy. Um, the original idea was something that I just saw in the middle of the night when I wasn't sleeping on Pinterest. And the picture was from somebody called Simon's granddaughter. So just want to give credit to that person. Um, I did see this idea a few other places but that was the start. And usually how, that's how it works. I see something and then my mind just starts running. So let's talk about what you're gonna need. You're gonna need either some wine corks or champagne corks, and then you're gonna ask me, where do you get them? I almost always find mine at a thrift store at Goodwill. Not usually this big of a bag, but this bag was $5.95, and I've just been crafting out of it for like the last month and a half. But you can find them at thrift stores, you can find them at craft stores, they're more expensive if you buy them there. You can find them at restaurants and bars, just ask. And, or maybe you have a friend um, who has some saved wine corks. So, um, And both wine corks and champagne corks work. Wine corks are gonna be more straight up and down. Champagne corks have this little shape to them where the out, this part was on the outside of the bottle and this part was inside. So either way, uh, the only thing is I would not do this project with a synthetic or, or fake cork. I would definitely choose a real one. Okay, so we're gonna start at the beginning. Um, don't be afraid. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, so what I did, and I'm gonna see if I can do it here right now in front of you guys, was, let me move my little plug just a little bit closer. Okay, so uh, last week I was drilling some corks for another project, so this week I'm a pro at it. But basically what you're gonna do, this is my husband's drill that's like 40 years old. I think he got it as a teenager. Um, you know, I don't have any fancy tools. Uh, and you don't need that. If you have a drill of some type, that will work, or if you could borrow one. Okay, and then you're gonna need something to hold your wine cork or champagne cork. So we're gonna do this one. Now let's think about it. We're going to need a hole in the bottom so that we can put our stick in, and I'll show you this stuff. Then we're gonna need a hole somewhere in the middle that looks like the area where the bird goes in, or you can put a stick in there. Let's show you the profile. Um, and you possibly will want a hole on the top if you wanna do this fancy technique where I put an acorn cap in upside down, and then I put a smaller acorn cap in the top of it. And I'm gonna to talk to you all about acorn caps and acorns in general in just a minute, so stay with me. Okay, so let's, Let's just do this one standard. We're gonna put a hole in the bottom and then a hole in the side. Now, you can decide which way do you want it to go. It, it really doesn't matter. I have found that it's more difficult to find acorn caps that fit the bigger end of a champagne cork. So we're gonna drill all our, our hole in that end and have that be the bottom. Okay. And I think you guys can see. So I've got a hold. And this is my, I'm, I'm so just a regular person and not like a craftsman type woman. Uh, this is my um, drilling piece of scrap lumber. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my, I'm gonna hold on to my cork, good, and stick my drill into the top of it. All right, this is gonna create a big mess. And there you go. It doesn't have to be super big. Okay, and then we want to do a hole on the side, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to put it on this pretty part. So I'm just holding my champagne cork like that. Okay. And we'll pull the 
this little piece off right here. That is what you're gonna get. So we have a hole in what will be the bottom. Oh shoot, I did this wrong way. Oh well. Um, for the pole, and then a hole in the side that looks like it's a birdhouse. All right, let me move this back out of the way. So that's the first step. Just drill, find your, your um, find your uh, corks and drill a whole bunch of them at the same time, okay? Um, then we're going to do the next thing, which is the pole. Okay, and are you wondering what even in the world are these for? They're like miniature birdhouses. Where's the front of this one? Right there. They're miniature birdhouse little things that you can put in a potted plant, or you could just put a whole bunch of them, you know, in a pitcher or honestly, wherever you want, but I'm gonna be giving these away. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of them and just gonna be giving them away to people because one, they cost almost nothing. Two, they're super easy. Three, these are so unusual. I mean, I've seen a million cork projects and I've really only run across this idea once or twice. So, um, as you're, you have a small non-electric drill to use. That works great, Sh Sharita. Where did I get the blue mat? This is a silicone, silicone mat that um, one of my followers, Deb, sent to me. And um, I did look on Amazon. You can order these. They're, they're heat proof. They're, nothing sticks to them. You can paint on them. Um, they're great. This is just part of one. She cut hers in part and sent me half. So just, uh, if you want to look at these mats, go to Amazon or wherever you prefer and s search silicone, silicone crafting or baking mat or something like that. Okay, where was I? All right, so the poles. Okay, they start out like this. They're just those little dowels. And you can find dowels everywhere in the world, <laughs> everywhere, from all your major craft stores to Dollar Tree, whatever. I think personally, I'm gonna show you this, that they look better stained, we're gonna do that. And also, I think personally that they're more, uh, more in proportion with the wine corks when you use a skinnier one than a fat one. Okay, so I recommend the skinnier ones. All right, so I have three of them out here. Did I remember to get a wipe to clean my hands off? No, I did not. Oh well. Okay, I'm just using some brown stain that I have. And um, a baby wipe. This is actually an antibacterial wipe. And all I'm gonna do is dab my wipe in a little bit of stain. And then basically just rub it on my little wooden dowel. Let's do these other two. So any kind of um, stain would work. You could also dilute some brown paint. If you don't have that, that would work too. Or you can leave them the lighter color, but I don't know. They look better with the cork when it's not such a stark contrast, in my opinion. So, where are you watching from today? And who likes this idea so far? If you do, please sprinkle. Um, if you have friends that like to craft or like things like this, um, I would love it if you would sprinkle this video. Okay, so that was pretty quick. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm saving my little baby wipe or antibacterial wipe here so that I can reuse it. And before I came live, of course, I, I have been playing with this project all morning. I have to get all the details worked out before I come live to you. I'm not the type of crafter that's confident enough to come live and do something for the very first time. Okay, so these are two that I did beforehand. And just to compare, this is what they look like natural. I think they look just so much more finished. Um, all right, so we drilled. 
If you missed that part, come back and watch this on replay when I'm done. Thank you so much for the stars and thank you for all the sprinkles. I appreciate that. I see Alabama and Wisconsin. Uh, lots of you guys watching. This seriously is my absolute most favorite wine cork and champagne cork craft project. It's also the most unusual, but I bet it won't be for very long because I bet you a lot of you guys are going to want to do it. Okay, so okay, so there's multiple options of what you want to do, but let's start with, I'm just looking, let's start with one of our corks that we've drilled. This is a champagne cork. The first thing you're going to do is insert your bottom, just pushing it in to get it in there good, and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to put a little blob of hot glue in there. Now, we could, um, we could do like a little pole coming out of our uh, birdhouse. And these are just some, you guys, I found at my local Goodwill when I was taking a batch of stuff over there to donate this week. I wasn't supposed to be shopping and I didn't plan to, but on my way out, I saw this huge thing of twigs that are long and it was two dollars and 99 cents so of course i had to get that and then i um am working on a pretty arrangement in this vase that i have in the kitchen um, but these are some of the pieces that i clipped off and this one has a little nub on it so we'll see if this could possibly work i don't have the right scissors to be cutting this right now I'm sure we have something out in the garage that would work wonderfully, but it's not handy to me right now. Okay, I'm choosing this one because it has this little nub. Oh, Susie says her buttons still aren't working. I'm so sorry. Hey, Susie, guess what I got today? My husband said, what in the world is that? She sent me some tweezers for craft tweezers. So thank you so much, Susie. That was, you're just... You just bless me all the time with little things. I so appreciate it. Okay, so we could leave this hole right here like that, or I could come back with my drill and make it bigger if I wanted. But just for fun, we're gonna try inserting a twig. Oh shoot, I almost broke the little nub off of it. That's kind of long. Hmm, let's look. It's too long. Let me find another one. <laughs> so everything's flying across the room. Let's try this. Make it shorter. I know this is not the right tool to be cutting this, but I just was using what I have handy. Oh. Okay, can I find the perfect piece that went flying across the room? Yes, I can. So I'm hanging on to all these little things, bits that I cut off, and I'll show you that project maybe over the weekend. Um, because we're going to make one of those Christmas tree things with the different slices of wood. Okay, so this is what I have, and it has this little teeny nub. Can you see that? And is this going to fit our hole? Yes, so I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue inside of this hole. I'm going to put our little bird. Like It's like a little, you know, that little stand that birds can can come to. Okay, see? Isn't that cute? And I did that on this one, which I think this one is maybe a little bit too long. Here, let's see if I can... But it, it is what it is, and it's pretty cute. Okay, so this is what we have, and then the next thing we're going to want to do is put on an acorn cap and some moss if you want. This, I think, is reindeer moss, if I remember right. 
and um, it's still soft and, and pliable. I'm going to put some reindeer moss underneath. You can skip this step entirely if you want. You don't have to do this. I just think it adds uh, to the look of the whole thing. I don't know how much I really need. Okay, so I'm going to put some hot glue on the bottom of this puppy right here, and then we'll talk about the acorn in just a second. We can trim this all up later. I just like the look of a little bit of green on it. I think it adds to it. I will use my heat gun when I'm all finished to melt all of the glue strings. Okay, so talking about acorn caps. All right, <laughs> so we have some trees that produce acorns in our front yard, but they are the teeniest, tiniest little things ever. And I've had a busy week. I didn't get a chance to just run to the park and find some acorn caps. So, you know, you can buy absolutely anything you ever want on Amazon. And I know not everybody likes Amazon, so um, try Etsy if you, don't, if you don't like that. But I bought this bag of acorn caps. They're all different sizes. I'll include the information in the comments when I'm all done. They're, they're dried. I don't think they're specially dried, but they are dried. And um, look how cute some of these are. Okay, so what you need to know is that, um, let me take this apart right here. You might use that one, that's adorable. Is that um, when you get your acorns like this, I've tried this in the past, this, the seed part in the bottom, it's gonna eventually get moldy and yucky. The caps are like wood. And those, as far as I've been able to tell, you can keep forever. So when you get your acorns, if you're pulling them out of your yard or a park or something, you wanna get rid of the actual acorn part and just keep the tap, the top separate. Okay, so. Um, now I'm just trying on, eight. this is like trying on shoes to see what size is going to fit. Ooh, that's cute. And it's got this little bend at the top. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue on here. Which one was it? This one. And pushing my... Is that the cutest thing ever? Can you imagine... Um, just sticking these in some plants throughout your house and you can you can vary them up like you can do all different styles and you could cut your little dowel shorter or longer whatever you like let's do another um, okay let me look at what I've got going here I feel like I did I drilled one with the top and a bottom maybe I didn't Guess not. Okay, let's do a wine cork. This is the best one I have. Let's do this one right here. Robin K, whatever that is. I don't know. It came out of this bag of wine corks. Okay, so I've already done the hole in the bottom. I'm just going to stick my dowel in. Get it secure in there, and then we're going to glue it. Whoops. I'm just dropping everything today. So what do you guys think? Do you love this? Do you absolutely love it, love it, love it? Yes, for in plants and arrangements. Oh my gosh. Um, to me, this is just so different. You know, I have, let me show you a couple other things I have hanging out right here. Okay, so last week or the week before, we used corks and we made these adorable keychains. showed you how to do that. Love that. 
And then I know lots of you guys have done these. Christmas trees, pumpkins, all kinds of things. This was some, a project that I did last year. What else did we do? We did a garland, which I don't have handy. I mean, there's tons of things that you can do with wine corks and champagne corks, but this is my favorite. Okay, so I have my stick in the bottom. Let's do this one just a little bit different. And let's put a little bit of the moss on the top of this guy's head before we find try on the shoe size to find which which uh, cap is gonna fit. All right, and I am using my low temperature hot glue gun, which really needs to be cleaned up. It's got moss and all kinds of stuff stuck in it. Anyways, this is a Sherbonder low temperature hot glue gun. Uh, this is one of those projects where you're likely to get hot glue on your hands, so don't use a high temperature hot glue gun unless you are a super expert. Okay, and then we could just stick this cap right on the top of it. That would be so cute. Yeah. It looks like a, um, a ski hat with some little hair hanging down below. We could put something right here too. Okay, I did have one other idea that I wanted to show you. Um, and I was working on this before I came live. I'm just pulling the hot glue clumps off. Okay, so this is a wine cork, and it has two layers of acorns. I chose two that were different sizes, obviously, and one was a lighter color and one was a darker color. So I glued those, I glued this one on first and then I glued the little one on next. And then I just took some of these, what were they called? Upholstery nails. These have been in my craft closet forever. I used them on something a long time ago. I don't even remember what. But these are, I don't know where they came from. Sorry. They're kind of a bronzy colored, hammered looking thing. And just to mix it up, instead of drilling a hole on this one, I just pushed one of those into the center right here. And I have a hole right here. So let's finish this puppy off. Some corks are super easy to drill. Some are more challenging. This one was a more challenging one. Okay, I just put my, my pole in and I'm going to add a little hot glue. So, I have a plant outside that I meant to carry in the house to show you guys what that you could do one or multiple of these in it. Um, but I forgot. <laughs> so I wanna know what you guys think. Would you be likely to do something like this? This is just, to me, these are so different from what I see all the time as your typical wine cork and champagne cork crafts. Oops, where's the front of that? That I just wanted to share them with you. So, let's see. What are you guys saying? Adorable, Sherry says. And Tanya sprinkled, thank you, Tanya. I appreciate that. Um, Teresa says she's gonna make these today. You must have everything that you need. Teresa says, absolutely doing this. I, I agree. I want to make about 100 more. And I probably will make some more while I have all my mess out. I might as well. Uh, but anyway, so there's lots of different things that you could do. You can put the, some moss on the bottom like I did with this one. Where's the front of that? Right there. Can you see the hole? It's in the letters. 
you could put the moss on the top with a little hat over the top. You could put an upside down. You know, let me show you how to do this one. Um, and then I'll have to finish it with, uh, with my drill. Well, let's, let's just do it with the drill right now. We'll make this upside down one, okay? We're gonna do with this. Bring my drill over carefully. Don't ever hold on to your corks with your bare hands. And I don't know, depending on how cautious or not you are, you might wanna use protective eyewear. Uh, don't have your drill plugged in if you're changing the drill bits, you know, all that usual. Drill thing. Okay, so for the, for the acorn, the upside down acorn cap, you don't need to drill your hole very, um, very deep, but you want it to be wider. This is where this pole's gonna go. That's a little side birdhouse. This is for the top. Okay, so then what you would want to do is find an acorn cap that is big enough and kind of flatter. See the difference between like this one and this one, for example. Let me see if I can get my fingers out of the way. And I'm going to be gluing the little top into this hole. Whoops. So this looks funny. You're like, well, what in the world is that? Looks like this cork has a bird bath on top of his head. Okay, and then you can either add some moss in the top and then another little topper, or you can just do one plane. And I'm gonna just do one plane in the top. So now we need to find another cap. This would be cute. This is maybe a little bit too big. Let's see. I want something small but tall. This might work. Well, no, that's not big enough. So when I hop off, I will go look at my Amazon history and figure out where I got these acorns. But basically all I did was search, will this work? No, I just um, went to Amazon and then I searched acorn caps. And sure enough, you can buy acorn caps. One of those work, those are not quite tall enough. Pardon me while I'm searching for a moment. And I like this one, but it needs to be either darker or lighter. feeling very indecisive. I may just do one of these ones that I have in my hand. I think I'll do this one. Okay. So here's the little topper and here's our little acorn glued upside down to the top of our champagne cork. And I'm just going to put some glue in here. You guys, if you end up doing this project, I know you'll put your own spin on it and it's going to be fabulous. So I for sure want to see pictures. Um, you can share pictures either here in the comments, that's great, or I set up a craft group for all of us to share our craft pictures, you know, and ideas. It's called um, Dreamy DIY. It's a Facebook group. It's free. Dreamy. DIY, there's a space there. So D-R-E-A-M-Y space D-I-Y. It's completely free. If you haven't joined that yet, um, you just would put Dreamy DIY in your Facebook search bar, go there, answer the questions, and we'll say yes, come on in. We'd love to have you part of our group. Um, we do ask 
that you don't um, use that group to try to sell, you know, whatever you might be involved with. And also that you um, are nice to other crafters and positive and all that kind of business. And that you don't share other crafters videos in that group. Um, that's all we ask. So if you just answer the three questions, yes, 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 uh, then we'll say, come on in. And you can um, share pictures of your, but let's see, what was I calling these? I'm gonna do some moss on the bottom. I think I was calling them, mini acorn cap and champagne cork birdhouses, something like that. So you could share those pictures there. Okay, so this is what I have so far, and I feel like it needs something, so we'll just put a little bit of glue on the bottom. I'm just gonna stick some of this reindeer moss into it. This step right here is where you're really likely to get yourself burned if you're using high temperature hot glue on this. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Okay, this is not wanting to stick. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. <laughs> adorable. Look at that. Now I could come back if, oh my gosh, I drilled a hole all the way through. Wonder why I did that. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize that I had already drilled the other side. It does not matter. This is a two door birdhouse, mini birdhouse. Um, so I wanna see pictures of what you do. And if you have ideas, I did have another idea and that was to build like a little pointy roof on top of some of these. And I was thinking you could use corrugated cardboard and just pull off one side so you have that little bumpy. But I have not gotten to that yet. So I'd love to know if you try something like that, if you do that idea, I'd love to see. All right, well, this was sure fun. Um, if you liked it, let your friends know. Um, if you have questions, I'm just trying to twist them all around to the front, but that's not gonna happen. If you have questions about any of this, um, just feel free to ask here in the comments. And uh, if you wanna take a screenshot, here you go. Okay, I'll do one without me in it, if you want a screenshot. Uh, so I'll get pictures, I'll put them here. I'll also put them um, just on DIY Dreaming. And thank you to everybody who did stars, I appreciate that. Thank you to everybody who sprinkled, that is awesome. Hey, if you wanna see what I have coming up over the weekend and for Christ and Crafting on Sunday, take two seconds to look and see if you've liked and followed this page. And, um, to turn on your notifications. And then the more I learn about Facebook, the more I learn that this, that's a heart, and this are good, but what Facebook really wants to see is interaction. So if you want them to serve you what we're doing here, this kind of stuff, or like, did you guys see this yesterday? Our gingerbread paper bag houses. Uh, I mean, I, I do stuff. I'll, I try to mix it up like crazy all the time. But if you want to see that, uh, they want to know that you want to see it. And the best way to show them is by engaging. So if you say something in the comments, it could even be um, <laughs> a nonsense statement. Or you could just say, I love it, or something like that. Or ask a question. And um, that plus liking, following, and turning on your notifications makes it a little bit more likely that they'll actually show you what I'm doing here. All right, thanks Susie. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna hop off now and answer any questions. Can you see the tassel tree behind me? Oh, I would love to show you that. This was one of my favorite projects that we just did maybe, I don't know, a month ago. Isn't it cute? So I, um, I can find the link for this if you would like. 
or you can, it's in my videos here at DIY Dreaming, and you can watch it, it's super simple, super duper duper simple. Yeah. Okay, have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.